Right, we, we've talked about what, what cancer is. It's uh, when you get uncontrolled cell division. Cell division is a natural, uh, normal process which has got to occur for life to uh, continue. Um, and when, but it's also got to be very tightly controlled because you get excessive cell division, you get tumors developing, and that happens in cancer. Now, we've looked at the role of two different sorts of genes. We've looked at tumor suppressor genes. Uh, now, if they are uh, inactivated, then cancer will, uh, then, you know, that's the potential for a, a cell to become cancerous. Uh, so inactivated, cell becomes cancerous. And the almost the opposite of that are the oncogenes. The oncogenes are when they when they've got a normal role, when they're overexpressed, or if they're mutated, um, then you get um, excessive cell division, and the cells become cancerous. So let's have a look at how some of those mutations might occur. Right. We so we will. Uh, we know that um, the base sequence obviously um, codes for the amino acid sequence in the protein. And let's think about like right, we get a mutation in um, a coding region. So let's say that's C there. Let's say we get rid of that and it becomes um, a G. Actually, let's not do that. Let's say this T here very often it's the last one it doesn't make any difference so that becomes an a well that won't make any difference at all because uh, the remember the genetic code we say it's de degenerate there are more than um for each amino acid there's more than one codon so gct or gca in the dna make the mrna and you'll still get arginine in the protein so if you get a mutation there it won't make any difference at all um Right, very often then if you, it's usually the third base, which doesn't matter. If you say change the G to a C, then I don't know which amino acid that codes for, but it's I'm pretty certain it's not arginine. So you'd get an amino acid there, which would be replaced. You get different amino acids, the protein, but that still might not make any difference to the protein's uh, function. If it's in a part of the protein that's not really that important, it might not do anything at all. On the other hand, it could massively uh, alter the um, the way the protein behaves, and you know if it's a tumor suppressor gene, yeah, and it stops it working, uh, stops that working by having that mutation, then uh, obviously you've got both of the the tumor suppressor genes, one on each chromosome, both of them mutated in that way, then that cell become malignant. Uh, but it's quite unlikely. Let's see what, what, what is more likely to happen here. Uh, right, so if we get an insertion of a base, so if you look, remember the genetic code is in triplets, so I'll divide it up. You've got those three, those three, those three, those three. If we insert, let's say we put another G in here, okay? So G is going to go in there. What that will do is it will now the the next codon is going to read instead of reading G C T there it's going to read uh, G G C and the next codon it's going to do that T G G so it's going to mess everything up and if you remember that is called a frame shift mutation and more often than not if you get a frame shift mutation you get an insertion as I've done there or a deletion would also cause a frame shift mutation, then you'll get a protein, which is, right, the first 20 amino acids of something or so may be correct. Everything after the insertion or deletion is wrong. So you get like what's called a truncated protein. That's a protein that's not going to work. It's only got a little bit of it. <clears throat> the first part of it there, or the first half of it there, and it's, it won't work. Now, if you imagine if that occurred to a tumor suppressor gene, that would stop uh, the, the tumor suppressor gene being, uh, you wouldn't get the gene product. So you'd, you'd only be working with one 
copy then. And if anything happened to the second copy on the other homologous chromosome, then that, can, that cell is going to become cancerous. So those kind of insertions and deletions, uh, they will mess up the tumor suppressor genes. Um, let's see what would happen if it was an oncogene. You know, if you get, um, let's say you get um, a frame shift in mutation with an oncogene, um, the oncogene isn't going to work. Um, that wouldn't probably lead to the cell becoming cancerous, but very often the oncogenes, they perform very necessary cell functions. So if you don't have the oncogene protein, you know, no protein, and it's performing an essential function, then the cell will die, which isn't a problem because the cell just dies. Uh, it, <clears throat> it's not gonna grow into a tumor or anything. So deletions of tumor suppressor genes by those insertions or, or deletions, frame shift mutations, um, that, that is something to think about. That's probably a likely way in which mutations can cause cancer. Uh, let's think about other changes in the base sequence here. Um, right, I've got tyrosine there. If you have ATG in the base sequence, and you change that G there for a T, it will turn it into a stop codon. So the mRNA will stop there. So you'll get a, once again, you get a truncated protein. Uh, and so if that's in a tumor suppressor gene, yeah, it's not going to work. And so, and you get a, uh, both homologous chromosomes mutated um, then you'll have a problem there. But <clears throat> I think you can see that's probably a lot less likely for this to happen. This turning, a, you know, a, an amino acid into a stop codon is a lot less likely than an insertion or a deletion. Um, there's a lot, of, you know, there's, there's quite a high chance that that's not going to work. Whereas every time you get an insertion or deletion, you will get a, um, a frame shift mutation. Okay, let's talk about another. Um, uh, possible way and so we're not talking here about changes in the DNA <coughs> we're talking uh, the base sequence anyway let's have a look we've got here we've got a karyotype um, and our karyotype is when you look at all the chromosomes uh, from a dividing cell and you order them all in size and um, the human genome as I'm sure you'll know is 23 pairs um, 23 autosomal chromosomes and then one pair of the X and Y. I've only drawn four there because it's obviously going to take too long. And here, if you look at it under higher magnification, you can see you get bands in the chromosome. That, that also, that, well, that, that can also tell you if, if anything has gone wrong there. Now, if you look at the karyotypes of tumors, very often the karyotypes are abnormal. Uh, it's uh, it's very frequent to see things such you can see in, uh, a duplication of chromosomes. So here you should have one chromosome, you know, you should have two chromosome ones. In a tumor, you might see, right, you've got, I draw them in red there, you've actually got four of them. That's not uncommon. And again, you might have with the same, in the same tumor cell, you might have, you know, an odd number of an extra three or something. How does that arise? Well, it arises from the, the, uh, the chromosomes not separating properly during mitosis. And so the, the more times a cell undergoes mitosis during the course of your life, the greater the chance of this happening, which you know, would explain quite nicely why cancers tend to occur in late middle age. They don't occur in young people that much. Right, now let's see how that could affect it. So you've got here, you've got like say, You've got duplication, so you've got to say four times chromosome one, the example I've done here. If you've got an oncogene on chromosome one, you're going to get excessive um, expression of the oncogene. Um, and we've seen that oncogenes, yet yeah, they are normal, and so you need them to be expressed. But when you get too much of the oncogene product, um, very often having too much of that product from the gene will cause the cell to proliferate more than it should do 
and the cell is going to divide too much. Okay, so we've seen there duplication of chromosomes uh, can lead to uh, potentially lead to tumors um, uh, growing. Right, so let's get rid of that and let's think about what happens. This is the opposite of, of duplication. Let's say you get one of the chromosomes has gone missing. Okay, so if you have um, you know, you don't have two copies of chromosome one for some reason, you've only got one of them, right? If that so, if uh, if you have a deletion of chromosomes and saying that chromosome uh, has got a tumor suppressor gene on it, well, that tumor suppressor gene is not going to be expressed. And if something goes wrong with the other chromosome, you get a mutation event on that, then no tumor suppressor gene, the cell is going to become malignant. So that's a, that's a possibility there. Uh, there are also, um, I've said there, deletion of a whole chromosome. Sometimes you don't get a deletion of the whole chromosome. Um, and that's why with these bands, it makes it a bit easy to see. So saying if you had chromosome one, and you could see that um, the bottom part, it all seems to be fairly okay we've got the bands in the right place but you can see there the way i've drawn it hopefully you can see that I'm missing this top bit of the chromosome uh, that happens very frequently if you look at the carrier types of tumors there's bits of chromosomes missing again if there's a tumor suppressor gene on there it's going to affect the cell uh, another thing which quite often happens is you will get a rearrangement okay so i'll draw that here so Let's say you've got a normal chromosome one. It should look like this. And you've got this stripy bit, which I'll draw the stripy bit in red. It should be there. Um, let's say that this chromosome is basically um, that bit there has moved down to there. So you've got the same genetic information. This happens very regularly. Um, the chromosomes they get bits of them move about um, so that you've got a, um, a translocation that's called so you haven't actually lost any genetic material you just moved it to a different part of the chromosome well how could that cause problems well it can and there's a if you for example say if you've got an oncogene um, so here is the uh, DNA that's an oncogene. And let's say you've moved it in front of a particularly powerful promoter. Uh, remember what a promoter is. A promoter is a region of the DNA upstream of the gene where uh, transcription factors bind to that. And they make the gene uh, get transcribed, make RNA from it. So let's say this is a very active transcription. So let's say you end up getting um, lots of mRNA from that gene. You get an overexpression of that gene. And um, because it's an oncogene, that causes the cell to become malignant. Um, that is exactly what does happen apparently in Burkitt's lymphoma. Um, which is a cancer of the blood, Burkitt's lymphoma. An oncogene, uh, it gets moved uh, near to a promoter. So that's a promoter. In this case, the promoter is for antibodies, antibody proteins, immunoglobulins. And so the B cells, which produce antibodies, become cancerous because they are you know, designed to make immunoglobulin so the, the immunoglobulin promoter is very active in those cells but instead of having the immunoglobulin genes there you've now got an oncogene there so that gets overexpressed so hopefully you can see by by that by we can have changes in the sequence of dna can lead to changes in the expression of tumor suppressor genes or oncogenes that can lead to cancer or it can be these whole chromosome rearrangements deletions translocations and so forth duplications that can lead to changes in expression of, again, the tumor suppressor and the oncogenes, which can lead to cells becoming malignant. And before I should 
before I finish, I should also say that sometimes you might get epigenetic changes. So if you know epigenetic, so that's changes in the in gene expression not caused by base uh, changes in the base sequence, but by changes in things like methylation and acetylation of the DNA. Um, it was covered in another video, so I won't talk about it here. But if you get epigenetic changes in, say, the promoter region for an oncogene, which changes its expression, then that could cause the cell to become malignant also.